Good evening and welcome to our home in Bronxville, New York. I'm speaking to you from our music room. At this time of year, usually this music room has been decorated and furniture has been moved to accommodate a large number of the bassoonists from the Morelli bassoon family. We get together for a meal and then we all come down here into this room and play uh, all sorts of uh, arrangements for multiple of bassoons. It's really something that I certainly look forward to and I know the students do as well. Unfortunately, this year we won't be able to have that tradition because of the pandemic. Likewise, at this time of year, we would traditionally be preparing our Bassoonorama concert to be played for you live on stage in Sudler Hall. And of course, for this year, we cannot follow that old tradition. And so we have a new, hopefully not tradition, hopefully next year we'll be back to playing for you live again, but a new version of Bassoonorama that each of us has recorded our parts individually. And this entire concert tonight has been layered together by two of our studio members, Matthew Matheny and Andrew Sledge, and they deserve a great deal of credit for having put this all together. All of the students worked very hard in getting this concert ready for you. The first piece you heard on tonight's program was the Bulldog Bula Bula March, which was arranged for eight bassoons by Thomas Duffy, Professor Thomas Duffy, for last year's concert, Bassoonorama 2019. And that's when it received its all-universe premiere. I'd like to thank some bassoonists that had joined us last year for that occasion, including Dana Brink, Molly Murphy, and Philip McNaughton. Philip will also be heard on some tunes on tonight's program. Two more examples of the combination of old and new traditions are arrangements which I have written for this evening's performance. So you will be hearing their, their debut performances on this concert. One is Mi Borito Sabanero by the Venezuelan composer Hugo Blanco. And the other is a medley of two tunes, one made popular and one written by the composer Jester Hairston. Another example of old and new traditions has to do with the way in which we will be playing the Nutcracker for you this evening. You will hear some arrangements, you might say, of the classical version, the traditional version of the Nutcracker done by Craig Coucher. These will be intertwined with wonderful arrangements, one by Yale alumna Yuki Katayama, who is also a member of the Breaking Winds, that'll be T, and a number of jazz arrangements by the fine composer and arranger Robert Elkier. This idea comes to us from a very wonderful and highly regarded version that was done years ago by Billy Strayhorn and Duke Ellington for the Duke Ellington Orchestra. These arrangements are not from that version, but we were certainly inspired by the vision of Duke Ellington and Billy Strayhorn. You'll hear a little bit more about that later. So for this very first uh, of the Nutcracker movements, you will hear the overture. You will hear it first in a more classical way, and then it'll go immediately into a jazz version, and we certainly hope you will enjoy it. Thank you. 
In the music room where we hold the bassoon party this time of year each year are included some of my treasures. Included in that is a quite a large menagerie of bassoon figurines. I've collected a few of them onto the top shelf of this curio cabinet to share with you. I have this beautiful wooden carved bassoon that my cousin John Morelli made for me way back when I was graduating from college. I have this very interesting uh, porcelain by James Christensen, who some bassoonists may be familiar with also as it was on the cover of one of the, Ameri the IDRS journals. This beautiful wooden angel was found by uh, my wife Bethany and I in Florence. Uh, this little pink guy over here I found on an Orpheus tour in Buenos Aires of all places. The uh, little glass figures here are from Morano. They're from, we got them in Venice. The uh, tall figure with the gray hair is an uh, adorable figurine made using a piece of bassoon cane, un uncut cane, uh, that was given to me at the Mori Festival in Switzerland last year where I was a juror at their international competition. This rooster was given to me by the Chiai City uh, Mayor when I was there at the Asian Double Reed Society Conference. And the one that started it all is this porcelain bassoon player. I found him as I was walking in Vienna on another Orpheus trip, and I, I was stopped dead in my tracks when I saw him in the window of a shop. Below, you will see on the next five shelves an assortment of even more bassoon players. And if you see in the middle shelves, there are quite a lot of military figures, which who will be highlighted next in the march from the Nutcracker.
The next piece on our program, Go Tell It on the Mountain, was first published in 1907 by John Wesley Work, Jr. as part of a collection of African-American spirituals. The son of a choir director, Work was one of the first collectors of slave songs and spirituals, publishing two collections while singing with and later conducting the Fisk Jubilee Singers. Under the direction of Work, as well as his son, John Wesley Work III, the Jubilee Singers played a vital role in the preservation of spirituals through their annual tours across the United States, and they are a large part of the reason why Go Tell It on the Mountain is so well known today. We hope you enjoy this arrangement of Go Tell It on the Mountain for eight bassoons. Bassoonorama has always included many jazz arrangements of popular holiday tunes, but what makes the jazz arrangement of the Nutcracker Suite so special to the Yale School of Music is the connection to Billy Strayhorn and Duke Ellington through the Ellington Jazz Series. Although the arrangements we are performing tonight are actually by Robert Elk here, the music still draws heavy inspiration from the Strayhorn-Ellington version. Here to talk a little bit about the history of the relationship between the Yale School of Music and Duke Ellington is the director of the Yale Jazz Band and Concert Band, Professor Thomas Duffy. The Nutcracker Suite by Peter Ilyas Tchaikovsky and Duke Ellington and Billy Strayhorn. Billy Strayhorn and Duke Ellington did an arrangement of several movements of the ballet, of Tchaikovsky's ballet. They did it in 1960 and released it on a record, the other side of which was their arrangement of the Pierre Gint Suite. So explorations into the, into the connection between jazz and the classical music world. And with a wry sense of humor, uh, Duke Ellington and Billy Strayhorn renamed many of the movements in the Nutcracker with their own kind of jazz parlance. The dance of the reed pipe becomes toot toot tooty toot. The March of the Soldiers becomes the Peanut Brittle Brigade. The dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy becomes Sugar Rum Cherry. The Russian dance becomes the Volga Voody. The Waltz of the, of the Flowers becomes the Dance of the Floriadors. And the Arabian dance becomes Arabesque Cookie, kind of rye humor. Wonderful swing arrangements of the of movements from the ballet. This Yale School of Music has a very personal connection with Duke Ellington. On October 7th of 1972, Yale faculty member Willie Ruff brought his friend Duke Ellington and 29 other leading black jazz musicians to Yale University for a celebration of what Willie Ruff called the conservatory without walls. That is the, the institution of jazz in America that was teaching people outside of school. And that evening, Yale School of Music Dean Phil Nelson declared Duke Ellington to Ellington to be the dean of the Conservatory Without Walls, 
and he awarded the Ellington Medal, a special medal struck with Ellington's image on it, to Duke and the other 29 musicians. That began a relationship between Duke Ellington and the School of Music. Duke died a year and a half later. Billy Strayhorn had passed away in 1967, so he was not there. And to this day, we still have in the Yale School of Music the Ellington Jazz Series. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Professor Duffy. Up next in the program is Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. We hope you all enjoy. <laughs> by Hugo Blanco from Venezuela, Mi Burrito Sabanero is a holiday staple in Latin American homes everywhere. Personally, I hear it every single year, whether it's being blasted in the kitchen while we cook or make tamales together, or just being played at a gathering with people dancing. This is definitely one of those songs that make the holiday season actually feel like the holiday season, and no Noche Buena or New Year's party would be complete without it. Thank you. 
Hello, and welcome to the Adams Center Lounge. Back in the before times, we used to have these really nice, comfy chairs to sit in, and it was really nice to just sip a hot drink between classes and rehearsals in front of the fire. Obviously, now we can't do that, but we can still have hot drinks at home. Next up, we have coffee from the Nutcracker, and you'll be able to see some of the YSM bassoon studio members performing their daily coffee rituals. Following that, we have a lovely transcription of Tea from the Nutcracker by a YSM alum, Yuki Katayama, who is also a member of the Breaking Winds Bassoon Quartet. I hope you enjoy. Next, you will hear an arrangement I put together of two tunes, Amen, which was set by the composer 
Jester Hairston to be used in the movie Lilies of the Fields, which starred Sidney Poitier. In fact, Poitier in, for that movie became the first African-American to win the Best Actor Academy Award. In the movie, however, you hear Jester Hairston's voice with Poitier lip syncing to it when they sing Amen. The other tune is called Mary's Boy Child and is actually written by Jester Hairston. It was made popular in the late 1950s as a calypso tune by the singer Harry Belafonte. Harry Belafonte and Sidney Poitier have been long, long time friends and both very active in the civil rights movement. Uh, Martin is quite familiar with Mary's boy child, Martin Milan, member of our studio, and he'll tell you more about it. What do you have to say, Martin? The next piece we'll be presenting is one that's known amongst Caribbean households far and wide. Mary's Boy Child is a Calypso song that's sung regularly in Christmas services and celebrations across the Caribbean region. While Hairston was an American songwriter, this work really speaks to the heart of West Indian culture and its use of Calypso style. Growing up, my mother would tell me stories of how she would go to church services on Christmas morning and sing the song as a youth while thinking of the delicious treats like pone and black cake that were to come after the service. I hope that you all enjoy this piece of music and think about the delicious treats that are going to come across your own Christmas tables. Thanks, and I hope you enjoy. another collection of treasures, which are images of bassoons and bassoonists and some other musical instruments that are found throughout the house. I'd like to show you some of them. Here are some smaller images that I received as gifts. I have found in other places, including on eBay. Sorry for the little bit of glare in some of these or the angles. I was trying to show them the best I could and avoid uh, daylight or lights from obscuring the images. This is a tile that I purchased at the Heckle factory, oh geez, a long, long time ago, several decades. 
And these are some examples of iconic Christmas cards that Heckel has sent in the past. This mobile I found at an arts and crafts store, uh, which was part of an exhibition uh, out in the plaza at Lincoln Center. And here's the iconic double read page, or one of them anyway, from Diderot's Encyclopedia. Last, but certainly not least, is this beautiful work of art that was given to us just recently by a member of the Yale class, Eleni Katz. We're going to call the next movement Waltz of the Bassoons and feature her artwork. Eleni, please tell us about what's being included. Thank you so much for that introduction, Mr. Morelli. Hi, my name is Eleni Katz, and I am a third year MMA student here at the Yale School of Music. And the next piece that my studio mates will be playing on the program is the Waltz of the Flowers from the Nutcracker. And in terms of bassoonorama, we have decided to call it the Waltz of the Bassoon Reads. And this is my third bassoonorama. And many of my friends have heard me say that bassoonorama is always my favorite time of the year. And this year that still stands true, although we are in musical isolation. This year is very different and it has presented a lot of exciting and unique opportunities for collaboration and also an opportunity to combine two of my passions, playing the bassoon and also artwork. In the Waltz of the Bassoon Reads, you will be seeing a slideshow of prints that I have made over the past couple of years. I started printmaking from a very young age because my mo mother is an artist and she was always teaching mono printing in her art classes. And as I started to get more serious about the bassoon, I wanted to make a present for my bassoon professors and I started to make a bassoon print design. And I would like to thank the bassoon studio for letting me feature my artwork in their beautiful playing. <laughs> Thank you. 
And so we're about to come to the end of Basunarama 2020, certainly a very special and very memorable event. Thank you very much for allowing us into your homes, for joining in for this very special occasion. We have one more piece to play for you, which we have played on a few occasions in the past in Sudler Hall on Basunarama programs, and that is Feliz Navidad, which was written by Jose Feliciano in 1970. He had been born in Puerto Rico in 1945. Once again, here's an arrangement by Robert Elkier. We heard several of his arrangements in the Nutcracker this evening. We'd all like to bid you a fond farewell. Each year, the Yelba students so look forward to performing for you. This year, perhaps even more. We hope you enjoyed Bassoonorama 2020 as much as we enjoyed creating it. We will never again take for granted the privilege of playing on stage for you in Sutler Hall. We'd especially like to thank Dean Blocker and the entire Yale community for their support in helping make this presentation possible. Wishing you all a safe, healthy, and peaceful holiday season. And we hope that we will all be together in Sudler next December to celebrate a year of renewal and reunion. I'll drink to that, Andrew. Until then, everyone, be well. Thank <laughs> you.